So hello to everyone again, and it uh, looks like I'm shooting this upside down. Hope that will make any difference. So my name is Alex Jaycox. I am a longtime Unix enthusiast and a professional systems administrator for over 20 years, including consulting and engineering and all that. And I am now a sales engineer, but uh, I still absolutely love technology. So therefore, when I found on eBay the other day, what appeared to be a new inbox, Sun Microsystems Ultra 5 workstation, I jumped at it and bought it immediately. So that just arrived today. Today is the 24th of December, 2020, uh, Christmas Eve, and Merry Christmas to all those who celebrate. Happy holidays or happy no holidays to those who don't. Um, but I will give you a peek as to what it looks like to look at a brand new inbox Sun Microsystems workstation from the mid to late 1990s. So as you can see, I've already cut the tape. And that's because I've already unboxed this once and then put it back for your benefit. The reason I did that is because I filmed this the first time, but my camera did not save the footage. By which you can tell, I am not a professional filmmaker, as I just said. So, I'm going to open this up. Again, please excuse the very primitive environment. I'm sure I'll say that several times in this video, but I'm in a temporary house, don't have my equipment, and I am not a videographer. So this is what you would see when you open the box. This is not Apple Sexy or any such thing. See a couple boxes. So normally this, what is turned out to be a very light box, would be the country kit or the keyboard and mouse. However, this machine did not come with one for reasons I'll explain in a minute. And you can see the part number on this is empty. Empty. So again, the, whoever ordered it chose not to include a keyboard and mouse to save some money. Over here are the accessories that come with the machine. And again, you can see the sun part number in here, kit ACC Gen 7. So if I open it, you'll see inside what looks like some fairly recognizable PC accessories. Please excuse again my poor camera work, this is hard to do with one hand. I promise I will never make fun of another person who posts a video with shaky cam or any such thing. And again, please excuse poor focus and all those things. This is just handheld on a cell phone. So as you can see, what you get in the box, um, you can see the Sun Ultra 5 software supplement. This is a fairly early Ultra 5. And if you look at the Solaris releases on this, assuming you can see it, and please again excuse my shadow because I don't have good lighting. Let's see if we can actually read them. There we go. So you can see Solaris 251 and Solaris 26 being mentioned. So this would have been a very early Ultra 5. Uh, Ultra 5s were sold for many years. Again, as I'll mention later, I'll go into more detail about what, what kind of workstation it is, but again, it's a low-end workstation for Sun. So you can see there's the software supplement. That is the CD with the enablement drivers, so it says specifically the service manual and the software update for the onboard PGX24, which is uh, PCI graphics. I believe that's Rage 3D Pro in P PC terminology. And then you can see here, there's a steel sealed uh, Solaris uh, Sun Ultra 5 pre-installed software getting started guide. I'm not gonna open that up at the moment. And then there's the registration card. And with the system, they shipped standard IEC power cord, a Sun Microsystems branded patch cable. Let's see if I can get close to one of the logos. You can see it. Here's the old Sun logo. Quite some affection for that logo. Sun was a pretty exciting company to work with. I was a Sun certified partner for a number of years. I never worked for them, but did a ton of work on their equipment. There's information about recycling this machine. I don't know why my cell phone keeps defocusing. And again, in another language. I'm guessing this is Spanish. And then it comes with a wrist strap. So, of course, like most electronics, you're supposed to use one of these when you open up and service the machine. Although I know a few folks who did. So I'm put this stuff back in the box. And close this box and put it out of the way. And then please excuse my poor camera work. Feel free to post in the comments if you don't like it but I cannot do any better. So here's the mid layer of the box. I'm gonna pull it out. And there's the workstation. So you'll see it in uh, 
better a little bit later in this video, but here's what it looks like new in the box. So this workstation was apparently pre-configured by a Sun partner. Again, I'll talk about that more later. A partner in this case was GTE. And uh, they would have ordered this from Swan Microsystems to resell it to a customer uh, as a supported system by them. So that's why it uh, appears to have been um, unwrapped and looks like it was slightly customized, although the software is new installed. Nobody has used it before. And again, you'll see a little bit late of that later on. So with that, let me take the machine out of its box and move it over to my tiny table. This is the Sun Microsystems Ultra 5 workstation, as I mentioned. It is a low-end workstation. In fact, this was the lowest end. It was sold uh, in the starting in the late 1990s uh, to attempt to um, get Sun's appeal beyond the traditional Unix workstation market, which was mostly academic and scientific and uh, high-performance computing based. So this workstation was meant to appeal to the masses. Uh, so on that basis, it's designed to, around a number of PC technologies rather than traditional Unix workstation technologies. So um, if you see, there is an interesting combination here. So if you see, I've got a box here. This is a Guardian. It's a KVM adapter. For some workstations, you can see I've got attached a PS2 keyboard and mouse. As you probably saw, the Dell keyboard and the IBM mouse, just what I had laying around. Um, but it also has a VGA output. Uh, so it can adjust Sun Standard Video, which is 13W3. Uh, as 13 standard pins and then three color pins that are larger. I'll show an example of that in a minute. Anyway, it can change the video, but it can also adjust the keyboard. And there are a number of dip switches on the adapter, let's just say things like resolutions, things like that. Anyway, so this is a low-end workstation. As I mentioned, it's based on a number of PC technologies. So it is not an ATX format PC, but it is somewhat close. That CD-ROM drive in there is likely a 24-speed IDE drive. The slot next to it is a standard 1.44 megabyte, three and a half inch floppy drive. Uh, but over it is a little bit of a different thing. So this flip up cover, there's an option for this machine where you can actually get two PCMCA or PC cards uh, slots in there uh, for to be able to insert primarily memory cards into what would have been the primary use for a machine like this. I'm going to close this. So as you can see, the machine is running. Uh, it's running a piece of software called GTE Site Patrol. And I believe this was likely shipped from Sun Microsystems to GTE, and then they would have sent it to a customer to subscribe to Site Patrol. I made another short video um, where I did some research on Site Patrol, but I'll go ahead and summarize it here. Uh, Site Patrol is a managed security solution by GTE, apparently launched in 1999, that uh, allowed a, uh, GTE to manage the firewalls of your organization for you. It'd be network firewalls. Um, interesting solution and a predecessor to something that would be a very common service in 2020 as I'm recording this. So quite interesting in my opinion. So because of that, this machine uh, seems to be new in box. Again, if you look at the front, there's no yellowing on it pretty much. And this sticker, this purple sticker looks to be in great condition. I'll force the phone to focus on it. So, and it indeed does have Solaris pre-installed. Uh, this is running Solaris 2.6 with a custom load. Uh, Solaris is Sun Microsystems uh, operating system for their Spark based workstations. It is a follow up to SunOS. And Solaris is a bit of an unusual uh, version number scheme. I might talk a little bit about this later. But first, I'm going to spin this machine around. And again, only have one hand since I don't have a tripod. So I'll spin it around backwards and I'll reposition myself so I can talk about the back of the machine. So looking at the back, this does look very much like a PC, even though it truly is not. Um, starting on the left, uh, I believe that is a pretty close to AT standard power supply. Don't remember how many watts off the top of my head. As you can see there's uh, audio in and audio out, and then next to it, you'll see the keyboard connection. Uh, it's Sun used a protocol called Access Bus. And it's somewhat akin to Apple EDB uh, to manage both the keyboard and the mouse. But then after that, you see a bunch of PC standard ports. So you'll see uh, right down here on the bottom, you'll see this uh, large 25 pin port. That is not a parallel port. This is, however, confusingly enough, this is a serial port. Um, Sun went with the reverse polarity on their 25 pin serial ports for legacy reasons. 
This is the second serial port, 9-pin PC standard. This is the built-in Ethernet right down here, RJ45, 100 meg Ethernet. Then up here, because this was shipped as a managed firewall, you'll see two other network interfaces. These are Sun 100 meg Ethernet cards, uh, Sun Happy Meal Ethernet, or HME card. H Happy Meal Ethernet was the code name, and it became known officially as the Sun HME. So that's what's installed in this machine. And I was actually curious as to why a machine would chip with two uh, additional network cards in what is ostensibly a low-end workstation, and that's why, because this is a firewall. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to open the machine up, and I'm going to pause the camera. We'll see if it can uh, manage to save my footage or not. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to pause that camera. I've made this mistake before. I'm going to stop it, save the footage, and start again. Okay, and I'm back. So magically, you may notice that the, uh, the two Phillips screws on the left and right-hand sides of the rear case have removed themselves. It's amazing how that happens. So let's take the case off, and I'll give you a tour of the inside of what one of these workstations looks like. So me, of course, I can get the case off with one hand. Remind me never to mock people who uh, do a poor job of, of camera work when doing filming again. So, I'm going to leave the case like that and stand up and we'll give you a tour again. So starting in the far right, this is the processor. <coughs> Excuse my cough. It is a Sun Microsystems UltraSpark 2i processor. I being low-end processors with a small amount of what they call eCache, which is processor cache. This particular one is 360 megahertz. These are two Sun Ethernet cards. Again, they're HMEs. And then you see the motherboard underneath. And please excuse it being a little dark. So I'll pan over. I'll show you the RAM. RAM right there. Those are 168 pin ECC DIMMs, uh, EDO. And I believe, if I remember correctly, this machine has 128 or 256 megs of RAM. I'll have to check next time I boot it. Again, you can see the standard IDE hard drive down here and CD ROM drive. See, interesting, it's got a CD audio connector. Sun had some ideas of trying to break into the multimedia workstation market that was mostly dominated by SGI in the 1990s, SGI being Silicon Graphics. So that's why things like that were installed. Um, there's an optional card you could put in this machine. Um, it's a built-in card. It, it had 24-bit graphics uh, or 16.7 million colors, and it's accelerated, but nothing particularly special. But on this motherboard, I'm going to move a cable out of the way here real quick to show you. This connector right down there. It might look a bit like AGP, but it's not. It's called UPA. UPA is the high-speed video slot. Um, so the Ultra 5 didn't really have a way to install a UPA card, but the Ultra 10, which is the same workstation in a mini tower case instead of desktop case, did. In fact, you can physically install uh, as long as you don't put the case on, you can put a UPA video card in this machine. You just won't be able to close the case because it will come up to about here. So, anyway, that's the inside of the machine. You can see the three and a half inch floppy drive, MyTech. So you can see it's a fairly standard PC power supply. And yeah, this is bog standard ATX. If you look at the power connector, so there's there's a lot of PC technologies in here. And again, this machine was, as I mentioned previously, intended to be a low end workstation. And uh, therefore, that's why it has IDE, as I previously mentioned. Um, the IDE chipset they picked was uh, CMD Technology 646, which is a fairly basic, I believe, uh, Ultra ATA33 IDE chipset. Again, off the top of my head. So it's not particularly fast, and there are a couple of bugs in it. So again, this machine was not particularly popular with dedicated workstation folks. But again, it wasn't really meant to appeal to that market. It was meant to get Sun into other markets, like possibly the home market. Um, low-end workstations and to get workstations into office environments where they had not previously used sun equipment. So anyway, that is a quick overview of a brand new in 2020 Sun Microsystems Ultra 5 workstation. And I'm Alex J. Cox. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up and I hope to see you again soon.